And daylight saving signs begin next Sunday. I am so looking forward to that. I thought it was this Sunday, and I prayed for it to be this Sunday, but it was a last, it's not. So, make sure you arrive, because if you arrive early, you'll hear the band practicing. So, All Saints Sunday is November 1st. Please give me names. Please email the office names. Um, please let us know names to include. So, oops, oops, oops. Okay, so, um, Thanksgiving food bags, we need, we've already reached our goal of 300 bags, but, but, we want more. So, please give your donations and put in the line Thanksgiving bags for, in the offering plate or online push bay. We've reached the 300 bags, but we always will need more. We have had record numbers of people asking for Thanksgiving bags, asking for angel tree items. And so the community has a need, and we're there to fill it. So Charge Not Prince Thanksgiving service, Youth Ascend tonight at 6.30 um, in the Fellowship Hall. Let's celebrate Advent together. We have Advent bags. More about that later. And so, please be welcomed into this space. Breathe in the Holy Spirit and out whatever distracts us. Breathe in the Holy Spirit and out whatever keeps us from focusing on God alone. Please stand and sing. <laughs>
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you are worth a thousand tongues. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing our great Redeemer's praise, the glories of our God and King, the wonders of his grace. Oh, let us bask in that grace. When we ever mess up, let us cling to your grace. Because you know when we sit and when we rise, you know we're going through hard things like grief, a loss of a loved one, a loss of the help we hold so dear, a loss of a job, a change in economic status. Those are all griefs. We know that you draw near to the broken heart. You tell us that in your word. Help us to cling to your word in these strange, crazy times. Help us to look to you for our comfort. Look to you for our solid foundation. Look to you for our direction. Holy Spirit, come upon this place, guiding and leading us no matter what May befall us. We give you praise for good test results. We give you praise for helping us get through last week. We give you praise for helping us get through another day. You give us sustenance to sustain us. You give us bread for the journey. We look for you and your tangible presence all around us. Make us focused on you. In the birds singing, in the flower beds, in all of your beautiful creation, you were signs and wonders to show us anew your presence. Help us to keep our eyes open for those little things that you bring into our lives, whether it be a specific word from you in your word, the Bible. Or there would be a song that we just happen to hear on the radio. Whether it be a friend's encouraging word. Whether it be the church encouragements. Whatever it may be. Lord, let us hear and listen. Let us tune into your voice. Because you make our paths straight. We can trust in you. And you will make our paths straight. And lead us in the way everlasting. We love you. We thank you. We praise your Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time we lift up our offerings. Y'all have been faithful givers. Give what you can, and the Lord will bless it. The Lord will bless it. Okay, so. Love God and love God people. Love God and love people. That's the basis of the Bible. Jesus said this is the two greatest commands. But if you look on Amazon for the basis of our text today, you will find a lot of shirts, a lot of buttons, a lot of stickers. Love God and love people. But there's also many varieties in a shirt that says, God loves the people you hate. Ooh. Well, God loves the people you hate. We use the, wor we use the word hate, throwing it around, without realizing sometimes. I hate broccoli. I don't actually hate broccoli. But Evie hates all vegetables except corn. I hate Carolina fans. I hate Clemson fans. I hate my brother or my sister, or when we're hanging out and teasing each other, we're saying, we playfully say, I hate you. 
We don't know what words we're saying. But then again, when we watch the news and we say we hate that political candidate or that group, it grieves the heart of God. We don't hold people accountable, but if holding people accountable leads us to hate, then we brought evil into our lives as well. You know the familiar Yoda quote, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear is leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. Fear is the path to the dark side. I think there is a definite correlation of fear to hate. When we're afraid of the election results, we hate the other side. When we fear that we will not get the promotion we think we sh should have, we've been overlooked somehow, we hate the person that gets it. Jesus had his share of haters as well. In Matthew 22, the text says the Pharisees sought to trap him in his own words. The Pharisees sought to trap him. The Pharisees tried to trick him, then the Sadducees tried to trick him, and the Pharisees went back again. This is between Palm Sunday and the crucifixion. This is the week in the middle. Matthew 22, 34 through 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, basically a biblical scholar, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Love God and love people. Love God and love people. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. It's not just the Ten Commandments. There was actually 613 commandments in the Torah, the Old Testament. 613. 613. Jesus answered with two holy scriptures. Deuteronomy 6, 5 reads, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. Jesus said, this is the greatest and first commandment. Then he used Leviticus 19, 18 that reads, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So he's picking up scriptures in the Old Testament, the Torah, and using it to support his argument, the greatest two commandments. He used scripture to answer the haters, the testers, and the doubters. They were busy following the 613 rules and judged his rule breaking. If looking down your nose at people or giving them a disapproving look, giving them the stink eye and being haughty were an Olympic sport, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were going for gold. We're going for the gold Olympic medal. Jesus knows all the scriptures and answers all the questions and was giving them something to think about. He doesn't leave us alone. He gives us food to think about. Maybe one of the Pharisees, maybe one of the Sadducees, when they stop being around other people, ah, the two greatest commandments. He, he just doesn't leave us alone. He just doesn't leave us wallowing in our pit of sin and judgment. He comes to us and gives us food for thought. He was showing them that keeping the rules was not the point. Not the point. If you love God beyond all else and you love your neighbor, the next door to you kind, but all people, then you will walk the talk in the way everlasting. You will walk the talk in the way everlasting. Jesus was a rule breaker. They never broke these commands. Think of him healing on the Sabbath. They didn't like that. Reaching out to touch and heal the lepers. They didn't like that. Actually interacting with and actually talking to the Samaritans. They sure didn't like that. I like how the message version of the Bible concludes this passage. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from them. I like this image. We hang up our coats towels, clothes, to keep him from getting dirty on the floor. Mike has a chair. He puts all the stuff 
that he is wearing, but he has a chair. So if he's worn a pair of jeans, if he's worn a pair of shorts, and he doesn't get them dirty, he has a chair. I have a bench. Enoch has a floor. <laughs> Note to self, you young people and you older people, put your dirty clothes in the laundry hamper. Put your dirty clothes in the laundry hamper. Whew. We hang up the good things, the things we will follow. Hang them up. Hang them up. We hang those that are commands to live by. We also want what God wants us to do, living peaceably with all. If you love God and you love neighbor, you live peaceably with all. Jesus didn't just want us to study these commands. He wanted to live us. He wanted to, us to live them. He wanted us to live them. If we focus and put all our energy into loving God with all of our heart, mind, and strength, and loving people as we love ourselves, then no matter what twists and turns life gives us, then we will have truly abundant life indeed. It's much easier to walk around with love in your heart, not hate. It's energy zapping hate. It's life giving love. Even if you've had a rotten, very bad day, Ugh. You don't take it out on others because the hate spreads. The angst spreads. Have you ever noticed that? If you're happy and go lucky and cheerful, it rubs off. If you're sad and depressed and despondent, it rubs off. However, we're not supposed to. Jesus doesn't expect us to be happy-go-lucky all the time. We go through journeys, we go through highs and lows, we go through mountaintops and valleys. He walks with us each step of the way, showing us the way, the truth, and the life. However, we need to put out good in the world, not hate, not judgment, not anything remotely resembling evil. We need to put out good in God's love and grace. God doesn't want us to twist God's commands and make it hard for hard's sake. God wants us to keep it simple. Love God and love people. If I'm at my wit's end with the kids, then I've got not given myself enough time to be grounded in God's word. If I'm busy and stressed out and I don't see the beautiful moon and stars around me, then I'm not paying attention to what's right in front of me. I can feel that I'm neglecting my time with God. I have a short fuse. The slightest slight sends me into tailspin. I'm critical of myself and others. My fears are amplified. And the root of bitterness is close at hand in my woe is me attitude. When I don't make time for God, when I don't abide in the true vine, I look and feel like a different person. How do you love God with all your soul, strength, and mind? By spending time in the Word of God? By listening to uplifting music, by watching the daily encouragements, by walking outside and talking in God's beautiful creation. Basically by focusing your time, a piece of your day, in God and talking with Jesus. When the scripture says pray without ceasing, it means you can carry on a conversation with a trying God and telling him about your day. Always. One of my favorite cards says, the real wireless connection, talking with God, talking with God. The real wireless connection, talking with God. Our Emmanuel wants a real, tangible, authentic relationship with each of us. Our Emmanuel wants a relationship with every single one of us. That's why Jesus taught this as the first commandment, love God with all of your soul, mind, and strength. Because when we develop our relationship with God, then the love God feels for God's people flows right out of us. And I can make stories about colonoscopies. I can make stories about Gatorade running through me, but I don't want to. You get the picture. 
I, if I know there's a need and I can feel it, but I ignore it because I'm tired, then I'm not prioritizing and giving my time to things that will last. If I listen to what the world says about someone and I don't offer them the benefit of the doubt, I am guilty of judging in the same way that I will be eventually judged. It's hard to be the only one not joining the trash talking. It's so easy to complain these days when we're all worn out and weary, and it's easy to point the finger at someone else's problem. It's hard to be the only one swimming against the tide. Loving God and neighbor is very easy to say, but it's very hard to do. I had a student one time that told me he had tried to put some of the lessons he learned in my sermons in real life. So, he said, it was difficult to put the lessons from your sermons into real life with my roommate. It was difficult to put your sermons and lessons into real life with my significant other. It's easy to say, but it's hard to do. It's hard to do. We have to remind ourselves daily to love God and love neighbor. Love God and love neighbor. I'm so excited that the election season is finally two weeks, less than two weeks. Oh, oh, oh. The recycling bins are gonna be empty, or mostly empty, because I get stuff from every single candidate under the sun. Aren't we excited that election season is about to be over? Oh, loving God and loving neighbor is much harder to do in real life. Paul knew how hard it would be to follow these commands. Romans 12, 1 through 2, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the virtues of God, to present your body as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. He continues with what has been described as the marks of a true Christian. In verse 9, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with a mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Cling to what is good. Cling to what is good in the next two weeks. Cling to what is good. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Do not be overcome, but overcome evil with good. Don't let hate win. In his book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis wrote, Do not waste time bothering whether you love your neighbor. Act as if you did. As we, assume, as we do this, we find one of the life's greatest secrets. When you are behaving as you love someone, you will pres presently come to love him. If you injure someone you dislike, you will find yourself disliking them more. If you do him a good turn, you will find yourself disliking him less. Wise words. If you pray for someone, I have this experience. If you pray for someone, you will eventually love them. It may not happen overnight. Nothing is a magic wand. But if you pray for someone, then you will eventually love them. Then you will eventually love them. It doesn't happen overnight. Let God's love be rooted in your heart and lives. It doesn't happen overnight. We may get spitting mad, but we all we need to take a time out, count to ten, and pray before retreating, posting the comment, or saying words that we will eventually regret and will eventually have to ask for forgiveness for. It doesn't mean that we're not fallible. It doesn't mean that we're not always right. 
but we can see things through a different perspective. You've heard walking in another person's shoes. We don't know what they've been going through. We don't know who's been going through what. We're the body of Christ, and we need to give each other the benefit of the doubt. We need to see Jesus, see the imagio Dei, the image of God in everyone we meet. Because God loves those people that you hate. Amen? Amen. They're all made in the image of God. Amen? Amen? So, we need to treat them as such. We need to treat them as such. If we're the only, we act like we're the only ones that created in the image of God. There's a song by Josh Wilson which speaks to this. It's called Revolutionary, and some of you may have heard it. Maybe you're not like me. Maybe we don't agree. Maybe that doesn't mean we got to be enemies. Maybe we just get brave, take a big leap of faith. Call a truce so me and you can find a better way. Let's take some time, open our eyes, and look and listen. And we're going to find we're more alike than we are different. What does kindness seem so revolutionary? When did we hate? Get so ordinary. Let's turn it around, flip the script, judge slow, love quick. God, help us to be revolutionary. I'm turning the TV down, draining their voices out, because I believe that you and me can find some common ground. See, maybe I'm not like you, but I'll walk a mile in your shoes if it means I might see the world the way you do. Let's take some time, open our eyes, look and listen. And we're going to find we're more alike than we are different. What does, why does kindness seem revolutionary? When did let, we let hate get so ordinary? Let's turn around, look the script, judge slow, love quit. God help us get revolutionary. What would Jesus do? He would love first. So we should love first. We should love first. Love God and love people. Flee from the hate that's become so easy these days. I know it's going to be hard in the next two weeks to cling to these two commandments. But I ask God to put y'all all in a protected bubble, you at home, too. That we may not let the hate penetrate us. We might not let the angst and the stress penetrate us. Because we are focused on the prize ahead. Christ Jesus, our Lord. Love God and love neighbor. It's as simple as that, but it's very, very hard to do. If you take it simple, it boils down to the two greatest commands. Love God and love neighbor. Amen. Let us pray. We can take courage and comfort in your word. In John chapter 16. I have said this to you so that you may have peace. In the world you may face persecution, but take heart, I have conquered the world. Take heart, I have conquered the world. May we all be peace bearers. May we all be image bearers, and we may all share your love. The love of God and the love of neighbor. May we give people second chances. We may not look on the outside only. We may, may we not assume. But may you come into our lives. Your Holy Spirit interwoven in our lives to give us eyes to see, hearts open, and ready to listen to your word. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please stand and sing.
God grant you peace everlasting. May God show you the grace that is only his to give. May God make you love ages and peace ages in this world. That you may walk in the way of light. You may show the world that you serve a true God. A true God by the way you act. Always. God bless you now forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.